with the new Formula One technical regulations now really showing what they can deliver in terms of cars, one of the biggest issues that the teams have been talking about is the weight of their new machines. To join me to talk about exactly what's going on is Craig Scarborough. Craig, this is something every team is struggling with right now. It is. It's a bigger problem this year than we've seen for, for many years. Uh, the majority of the teams are over the minimum weight limit. And it's important just to say that it is the minimum weight and you know they can be above it if they want to. They're just going to lose performance, but obviously they don't want to do that. Now, in pre-season testing, we all believed that the minimum weight limit was 795 kilos. But the teams, are, some of the teams, I should say, were a little bit unhappy about that and felt that weight limit was too low, even though it had been nudged up since the regulations were first published. And after, well, a little bit of complaining to the FIA, some of the teams managed to convince the FIA to increase the weight limit to 798 kilos, something Mercedes called inconsequential. How much of a difference is that really going to be to these cars? Well, it does make a difference. If you're on the minimum weight and you added three kilograms to your car, you're going to lose performance. And if you look at all the things you could change on a car in terms of aerodynamics, tyre grip, everything else, weight is the biggest sensitivity of a car. So if you change the weight by 1%, it's going to have a bigger effect than it would do if you gave yourself 1% more power. So it's a big problem and teams really do want to get down to that minimum in order to get the maximum performance out of these cars. Some teams have been able to do that. Uh, Alfa Romeo uh, and Alpine appear to be the ones closest, therefore arguing so much more about the increase. Uh, and some other teams, depending on who you speak to, could be up to 17 kilos over that higher minimum weight limit. Now, one of the things a lot of people are talking about is new rules. Of course, the car's going to be a bit heavier, things are different, but actually under the bodywork of the cars, a lot of stuff is very, very similar. So the power units, they're essentially the same. The weight limit on the power units, they have their own weight limit, that hasn't changed. The transmissions, they're pretty much much of a much a slightly different shape, but the weights are there or thereabouts. Electronics and all the basic car bits underneath that bodywork are all the same. So where's all of this new weight coming from? So lots of things have changed. Uh, first of all, you have uh, the wheels, the tyres and the wheel covers. Obviously you've got a larger metal wheel and weighs more, a stronger tyre that weighs more. And then you have the wheel covers, these aerodynamic covers, which are produced by Red Bull Technology. Now they were going to be carbon fibre, but when you consider you've got to rapidly make a thousand of these or more, um, and they are going to be something that's going to get damaged through the year. They've ended up being injected moulded plastic, and that means they're a little bit heavier. So that all adds to the weight. Probably the thing that's changed the most is safety. So you have, first of all, uh, increased crash testing. So about 15% more energy has to be absorbed by the nose and the rear impact structure. That adds weight. But then you've got some new safety features on the cars as well. So there's the front anti-intrusion panels. So that's a thick piece of carbon fibre and xylon that goes on the front of the nose. Uh, that's added weight. You have tethers at the back of the car holding the rear wing and the rear impact structure on in case they get wiped off in a crash. That's all added weight as well. So this is all kind of adding up. But then you've got to think about the other aspect is that with these regulations, even though you say, you know, much of this hasn't changed, they've really had to design a completely new car because the monocoque is different, you know, the steering rack may be different, even the gearbox may be different. And the first time you design something with the compressed time period they've had to design these cars, you don't do as great a job as you would do if you've had seven or eight years of optimizing that design over those years. And then last to add this, all of this weight up is the cars, despite being shorter, have a much bigger floor and that floor is much more highly loaded. And as we've seen, these floors flex, they wobble about as the car moves about. So you really want to have a stiffer floor as possible. And it's ended up being a very large and a very heavy component. So this is all added up and has stretched the teams past that minimum weight limit, certainly for those that are at the full 3.6 meter wheelbase. Yeah, and those floors, and then they are wobbling around and flexing, actually to stop them flexing, because if they flex too much, the car will be illegal, get disqualified so actually what the teams have been doing and they've been allowed to do uh, after the first race weekend really got underway in Bahrain was to add these stays to the rear floor to stop them flexing and that means they can make the rear of the floor slightly lighter now not all teams are entirely happy with that again because some teams have put an awful lot of work into making their floor as light as possible and not flex 
and then they had to add these stays. While other teams have now been playing around with the stays. So Williams, for example, found that they thought they'd got a good solution, nice lightweight stay. And then they found in the last couple of races, actually it was a bit too light, it had been breaking. And actually just adding lightness, which Colin Chapman always used to talk about, could also result in unreliability. So to make a part that's reliable and light isn't straightforward. No, it's not. And as you say, Alpine in particular, who designed the floor to be uh, only with internal stays, not with these big external ones, they're talking about a four kilogram saving with their updated floor. So that is a big chunk of weight to save from just one component when you're thinking that some people are looking for 10 or more kilos to be shaved from around the car. And as you say, some of those things they simply can't play about with. And crucially, it's not just putting your car on a diet. It's also about how, where that weight is coming, because there is a mandated weight distribution, isn't there? Yes, and this starts to get quite tricky then, because you want to have the car down to the minimum weight limit, but you've got to have the weight on the front axle and the rear axle balanced correctly, both for handling reasons, but mainly because it's in the regulations. You've got to have at least 44.5% of the weight on the front axle, and I think it's 54% of weight on the rear. And then you can then play about with the final sort of few degrees of weight, uh, weight distribution uh, later on with ballast or just moving components around the car. But you are quite limited. And if you can't get the weight at the right end of the car, then you really are just going to have to add weight in order to get that balance and you'll go back over that minimum weight limit. It's about a 12 kilo window of freedom. So Craig, I'm going to put you on the spot. How long is it going to get to take teams to get back down to the weight limit, but also within that weight distribution window? Well, I think it's going to vary massively by team. Uh, I think we're going to come into these crit critical races of Imola and Barcelona, where teams bring lots of big updates. They're going to be sure that any big updates they have are meeting a minimum weight limit or certainly trying to reduce it as much as possible. Uh, for some teams, that might be enough. I think there's some other teams that are certainly on the heavier end of the scale or perhaps are maybe more resource restricted uh, are going to take much longer. And if you think throughout the year, the teams have always got a weight reduction program ongoing, looking at every aspect of the car, down to the smallest detail, whether it's made by the team or it's something that's bought in from outside of the team, from uh, you know, specialist suppliers like brakes, seat belts, electronics, what have you. So they'll be pushing in every area. But I think most teams will probably be a lot more happy about where they're at by the time we reach Barcelona. And then it will just be refining that last little bit of weight out. Well, for some teams, it may not happen until next season. But getting that weight down overall will be one of the defining stories of the 2022 Formula One season. Getting your car light and fast is not an easy thing to do.